I got a new laptop in today. Uh, previously, I was using this ThinkBook, which is actually an excellent laptop, uh, but I needed something with a dedicated GPU for what I do. Um, and it's nice to have something that is uh, capable of gaming because I don't, I don't have a lot of time to play games anymore, but if I do, you have leverage that opportunity. So this here is the uh, Asus ROG Flow X13. Uh, so it's a 13 inch laptop, I believe it's a 13.3 inch laptop um, that is claimed in some ways to be the most powerful 13.3 uh, inch laptop if you for gaming basically. So it has an extremely powerful processor. Uh, it has uh, dedicated graphics, which is really nice. And it's super, super slim. So normally these are pretty pricey. Uh, Canadian, they're about $2,000. Uh, full price American, I think that would be seventeen hundred or so. Uh, I got it on sale for three hundred dollars off from Best Buy. Hundred dollars off for a sale, and then it's like a certified Geek Squad open box, not not refurbished or anything. So that was an extra two hundred dollars off. So I thought, you know what, now's a good time to get it. It has that typical kind of experience where you open it. It's nice. Um, so I guess that'll be right here. And that's the power brick, so nothing crazy. The power brick's pretty small. It's actually pretty weighty. Uh, the ThinkBook that I have, it's only a 35 watt laptop. Um, and it has a similar size one, but it's not quite as heavy. This is pretty heavy actually, but very dense. It feels good quality. Um, relatively small, like here's uh, compared to a mouse. So it is quite small actually. They probably resealed it actually now that I think about it, because they need to test these with the Geek Squad thing. So they would have tested the laptop and then resealed it in their own bag or separate bag. Um, seems to be good. Is it, seems like it's metal. I don't think it's, it could be plastic, but I think it's metal. Um, I'll have to look that up. I think it's like a magnesium alloy on the bottom and the top as well. So I'll just go over the specs real quick before I get into it. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so you get a little bit more height on it, which I like because I do a lot of document, look at a lot of documents. It's 116% sRGB, 86% Adobe, 85% DCI P3, which means it has good color. This particular model, uh, it's nice because it's not the 4K screen, it's the 1080 uh, screen, so it's 1080 by 1200 resolution, uh, but it supports 120 hertz. The 4K, um, models, which I think are more in Europe right now. There might be, I haven't seen them personally, but they're not in Canada at least. Um, they're a 60 hertz monitor. Um, you know, the graphics curve is not powerful enough probably to go above that, which is fine. So this is 120 hertz at 1080, which is perfectly fine for what I'm doing. Um, I, I personally do like, you know, 1440 resolution overall, but on such a small laptop, it's fine to be 1080, to be honest. This is a tiny little thing. RTX 3050 Ti graphics card in here. So, you know, the 3060 is going to be substantially more powerful in a G14, um, but it also demands a lot more power. I think an extra 40 watts or maybe more. I think it may be even 60 watts higher. So it'll be more powerful, but it'll use a lot more um, battery life. Uh, it'll eat up your battery life a lot faster. Um, this one can boost up to 35 watts for that graphics card, which is, uh, it can boost up to, sorry, 40 watts dynamically with this graphics card. So that's pretty good. I mean, for a thin and light, that's very impressive. The only downside is it's only four gigabytes of uh, VRAM, of uh, memory on the graphics card. So if you have certain newer games and you want to set the graphics up very high settings, like ultra settings, it just won't have the VRAM for that. However, the card is probably not powerful enough to do that anyways. So often you're going to have to settle for you know medium settings, which is still very impressive on it, the fact that it can even do that. Uh, memory wise, this is 16 gigabytes. Uh, I think you can get it in 32, but I haven't seen it in person in Canada. Ports wise, so this is the ROG port. If you look this, if you know anything with this laptop, you've looked it up online. You can it can come with a, an external Asus specific graphics card. So you plug it into this port here. Uh, I think you can get a 3070 and a 3080 at this point, and it really extends the power of this. So that's great. Um, you know, I'm not probably going to use that, but maybe if down the road they get really really cheap. You never know, I might use it. So that's fine, that's a thing. Uh, headphone jack, obviously. HDMI, fine. I believe it's 2.1 HDMI, or sorry, I believe it's HDMI 2.0. Um, so it's not gonna be the super, super fast, but again, the graphics card isn't gonna really handle that anyways. Um, but, you know, it's a 2.0, so it's fine. You get USB-C over here, uh, USB Type-A. I believe it's uh, 
3.2, so it's gonna be the faster one in power. Exhaust there, exhausts here. Okay, so that's the uh, USB-C. I'm not sure, I think this USB-C can do power delivery. I believe it can do a power delivery. It definitely can do display. So I believe this is power delivery and uh, uh, display at the same time. So you can hook up like an external monitor that's powered from that. Uh, and then under this little ROG thing is the, the ROG X, what is it, XGM interface here. So that's where that's gonna go. And the actual power is there. So there's a 100% chance that I'm gonna lose this thing and never see it again. I guess that's fine. I might cut it actually. So it's covering that thing but uh, still has the USB-C power exposed. So that's kind of a dumb design, but whatever. That'll be gone within a week at most. Um, let's open it up. So it's actually, it feels like it's magnetized. There's a nice little snap there. It could just be the hinges, but it feels like it's magnetized. One-handed opening looks pretty good. Little click at the end, but it's good. These things I actually keep because I keep them on my screen because sometimes your fingers get gross and then it gets your screen gross. So let's have a look there. I don't have the best lighting. I'm at a different location, unfortunately, than normal, so I don't have good lighting here, but that's fine. Trackpad is kind of small. I'm gonna compare this to my ThinkBook, um, which is an also very, very small laptop. Very, very small, 13 inch. Same size, trackpad overall. Um, you know, same type of keyboard layout, basically totally fine, so it's it's pretty standard to, I guess, a 13 inch ultra book, which is cool. Um, yeah, this is glass, I guess it feels kind of nice. This textured, got like a, it's a little bit texture. I'm sure this will get gross really quick. This was nice because uh, it's silvery. It doesn't get as gross as fast, but whatever. Um, bezels, uh, so we'll compare to this. This guy has no bezels, really. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. This guy has that chin. Um, so the actual height of the laptop is slightly higher is my guess let's see here yeah tiny bit higher um but that's because it has that little chin there which is fine um, i don't mind a little bit of a chin because there's more cooling and stuff to go in here so that's totally fine but very very slim so this is compared to this is a thinkbook 13s one of the smallest i think it is the smallest thinkbook you can get it might be the smallest laptop that they offer other than maybe the um the carbon which is roughly the same size overall um so there you go it's very 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 slim uh, the weight between these two, nearly identical, I would say within a few grams. They might actually be the same. This has a little bit more metal, I think, in it. So they're both the same, which is surprising. Um, yep, yeah, really, really slim. Quite nice. Um, so for me, it's perfect because, you know, I just, I want something I can pick up and move around with one hand in a lab setting. I want something I can toss into my backpack um, and it's super, super portable. It actually is something that's important to me is that portability. I don't like carrying around large laptops anymore. Uh, it does have a camera unlike the G14, which is another thing for me. I, I can't get a buy without an integrated camera. Uh, it's a it's nothing crazy. It's a 720p HD camera. I like the fact that ThinkBooks and ThinkPads have these little sliders. I really actually like that. Um, this doesn't have that privacy. I guess if someone wants to stare at my mug, that's fine. Um, so we'll test this out really quick. I'll just get it set up and then I guess I'll pop back. Okay, so now I've got through the basic Windows startup. Um, I'll just go over some of the specs real quick um, because it is actually relevant to this computer because that's kind of the point. It's a it's ultra book form factor, but it has, um, you know, much larger laptop specs. So the processor is very impressive in this. It's an AMD Ryzen 9 5900 HS, um, which is one of the fastest lap one of the fastest laptop processors you can get it may be the fastest other than the 5980 hs um there might be the h i think is a little faster but anyways it's a quite a fast processor the graphics card uh, so it obviously it has integrated graphics so if you don't want to you know if you're not gaming you can just use what's built into the into the cpu so it does have vega i believe it's vega 8 graphics um but, uh, so it does have the ig i gpu for just basic day-to-day -day stuff so you can actually output with that as well it does then have the dedicated graphics. This laptop comes with several different options. Uh, I think there's a 1650, which is a bit older. This one is the 3050 Ti, NVIDIA 3050 Ti, which is probably the most powerful GPU you could get from NVIDIA in this form factor. Uh, if you went with the 3060, it would dramatically increase the watt wattage on that graphics card, and uh, it would just devour your battery. So this one here is just a 35 watt battery, 35 watt GPU, 
Um, it can dynamically boost up to 40 watts, which is actually very impressive. I mean, I think the 3050 Ti can comes in a variant that's faster. So this is kind of like the Max Q version. But again, this is a 13 inch laptop. So if you went more, your battery would die almost instantly and heat would become a very serious issue. So, you know, typing on this is really, really nice. It's responsive, uh, feels good. Uh, the trackpad is incredible on ThinkPads and ThinkBooks. I don't care what anybody says. I'm gonna compare it to this. Um, you know, super, super nice trackpad. Let's see here. It'll take some time to, you know, really get this down, but um, the precision seems really good, actually. Um, you know, you can make those minor adjustments. It's not jumping. Some laptops, they kind of jump around a little bit because they're just not sensitive enough. So, you know, having a precision laptop is key. Precision driver, it's not quite as nice. I can tell you right now, like if I put my finger flat, there's a little bit up and down wobble you can see there, just a little bit. Whereas on this, none. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna put my finger relatively flat and move up. Zero wobble. It's perfect. It knows exactly what's going on there. This one, there's a little bit of wobble, so it'll go up and down, up and down. So you have to use the tip of your finger and then it's fine. You can see there. The click is nice. Actually, the click is nicer on this than on this, but it's just the precision of it. Okay, let's go typing. Typing is key for me too. I type a lot. I'm, a, I'm an academic, so I type a lot in general. Um, So I actually bought this online, um, but I had very briefly went into a Best Buy and played around with one in another city, and I was impressed with the keyboard and that was and just the form factor in general. But the keyboard was key for me. So, um, yeah. So these are actually raised up a bit more than the Think Pad, probably Think Book, probably closer to Think Pad. They're raised up a little bit. Um, and they feel really good actually. The key the key travel is like there's actually a lot. There's actually a lot of key travel there, considering it's an ultra book, quite a bit. Um, and they feel snappy, super snappy. They're a little bit more, I, don't, I would say rubbery, a tiny bit less tactile than a think book for sure. But I would say this is probably one of the best keyboards I've used in a laptop uh, that isn't like in recent years. It's uh, convertible. So I haven't done this yet, but uh, it goes all the way around and turns into a tablet. Okay, so this part of the review, I'm just gonna tack on slightly after. Um, it's been a few days since I've got this laptop because I wanted to get a stylus. I had like a Chromebook stylus and it didn't work obviously. So I just got this Microsoft Surface pen or whatever, a stylus, I got it from Best Buy and uh, it worked right out of the box. I just picked it up and it recognizes it. It's perfect. So you can, you know, just draw normally. It does recognize pressure. Um, so you can, you know, just have pressure settings. This is just one note, so it's not the most advanced setting program, but you know, the eraser works perfectly fine. Um, you know, all these features work great right in Windows as they should, I mean, it's a Microsoft product, but uh, this, the actual screen is very responsive. Um, you know, it doesn't write when you're not touching it. It does wait until you're actually touching the screen there. Um, and the actual uh, input lag is, I don't know, non-existent. I can't really see it, so that's great. And, you know, I, I thought at first I was just going to use my finger, you know, if I'm doing something, but I know OneDrive obviously doesn't work. But for things that I use, I actually use paint a fair bit. Um, you know, if I just wanted to draw like a little sketch or something, be like, oh, okay, I want to add this to my document, uh, which is fine. But, you know, it's, the pen works great. It's actually really nice. And then the nice thing is when I'm coming across here, I can still use it in other dedicated software like OneDrive where it's recognized much more natively. And you get features like the erase and, uh, you know, that's great. Um, and because this laptop is a convertible, uh, so as soon as you flip it like that, you go here. The palm rejection I found was really good. Uh, it's not the best I've ever felt, um, but it's good. You know, like I put my hand on it. It does initially start to move, but then now, um, you know, if, as I shift my hand, it's not doing anything, as you can see. Uh, it's just that initial when you put your hand on it, it'll shift a little bit. And then now it's, uh, you know, the palm rejection is great. Um, I don't have good handwriting with it yet. I have barely ever written on a tablet like this. Um, you can see there's a couple little skip thingies there, but I think I raised the pen up. Um, yeah, so you can see there, um, once it gets rolling, it's pretty good. It's not gonna be as good as, I don't know, potentially like a Microsoft Surface, which is a dedicated, uh, you know, sketch tablet, or probably even as good as an iPad, to be honest. Um, but it's not supposed to be. This is, 
just basically an added feature for this laptop. This is a gaming productivity laptop that um, has this added on and it works exceptionally well. I so let's say you have to read an So I'm gonna say there's gonna be obviously like a headphone check because this might be really loud. So just uh, just a warning for headphones. Long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big... Okay, I'm gonna turn it up so I'll get another headphone check. Oh, that's max, okay. So the speakers are down firing. I guess those are them there maybe. Oh here, here's the speakers here. One here and one here. Good bass. Okay, so that's that. That actually sounded really good. I mean, um, this is also down firing speakers and they're in a similar location. Um, there and there, so it's going to be a pretty similar setup actually. Okay, so this is maxed. So now I'm going to do a comparison in this, you know, this crab song thing that uh, Linus Tech Tips does, primarily because I know a lot of people actually watch his channel, obviously. Um, and so it'd be nice to have a comparison of something that is like-like. So I'll just do a comparison here. This is the ThinkBook, which has actually really good sound. Max setting, so watch your headphones. Okay, so the difference here is obvious. Um, the sound on both of them is great. The Think Book gets a tiny bit louder, I would say, just a touch louder, but it's actually at the high end, so it's a little bit, little bit pitchy, but it sounds still great. Uh, there's more bass in the Asus, just right off the bat, I can tell. Armory Crate I've actually used in the past and I like it. Um, I used it on the G15. Uh, there's some nice settings in here in terms of like fan curves and that too. Um, it's actually, this is actually really good software. Uh, probably not as good as, for fine tuning is some things like adrenaline or whatever uh, but uh, i do find that it works really nice and you can come in here and change that there are some settings that you're probably going to want to do here um, you know to decrease fan noise there's probably some settings over here in power that you could play around with like um, to decrease battery usage but uh, yeah it seems this is a really good software overall so i'm going to plug that in there that's the battery there Yeah, so when you when you plug in power, it's going to ramp up the settings a bit. Um, so right away it flashed. I guess it changed maybe the resolution or probably the app, probably the refresh rate went from you know sixty to one twenty or something. Well, yeah, it did. So I can tell right after that. So when you plug when I plugged it in, I can see that the refresh rate's already better. Uh, this is a little strange. I mean, I just I don't like that. Um, you know, that's a little wobbly, which is fine. That's a little wobbly for me. Um, but USB C ports are kind of tough, but. Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful with that. That's a little wobbly for me, um, in my opinion, because it's not being braced against anything around it. Um, but th the fact that, like, I've already lost that little thing. I don't even know where it went. It's up here. So <laughs> the fact that this thing comes off where the actual power is, so you're going to leave this off, but then it also has your power in there. Uh, but then it has that ROG kind of external GPU thing. That's kind of annoying. Um, I don't really know the benefit of that. Um, and you then you have to keep this off. So I might, as dumb as it sounds, I may actually cut that on that little line there uh, with that little knife over there, and then I'll have two pieces. So I probably sever, I'm not gonna do it right now, but I probably sever right here. Then I can leave the power part off, and then I have that port there, just so I don't get dust and grime in it. You know, not that I'm, in, I'm harsh on my laptop, but. Yep, so I'll give it a, I'll update the drivers that just popped up, and I'll start playing around with it a bit and see how it works in terms of gaming, and see how it works in terms of productivity, and um, 
you know, there are videos on that, so you can definitely see, but more of just a user experience. Like how is it to use in a professional setting? How is it for travel? Cause I'm gonna be traveling around today. And then how is it to use in a gaming setting? So I'll get back with that. Okay, so here we are. I, I just spared you me taking out the screws. There's four little tiny screws in the front, which is at a 45 degree angle here, um, facing that way, they're shorter. And then there's seven longer screws, slightly longer screws out here. Uh, absolutely no stickers or anything covered. You just take out the screws. And it was just a Phillips head, uh, smaller Phillips head size screw. Um, I'm gonna try to do this without one of those guitar pick style things. Just cause I don't have one in my hand right now. I think I can probably just pop this off. Yep. Oh, that came quite easy actually. So this is plastic, um, completely plastic, like the old G15 that I had, the 2020. Looks like there's some offsets there. Um, none of these look like they're uh, hooked in. So it looks like it's basically a straight pull off there, which is fine. There's a little bit of a lip there, but nothing crazy. So this is plastic, you know, doesn't have the best ventilation, but it's basically placed right over top of the two fans there to bring in air, um, which is fine. So on the inside, it looks like we have the SSD over here. Uh, it's a shorter size SSD. Unfortunately, it's not a 2280. There wouldn't be a lot of room for that, but um, this is a slightly less common size NVMe drive. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive to replace. Uh, the battery is a 60, yeah, 62 watt hour battery. When I'm playing games on the battery, if they're very intensive, it's probably around two to three hours gameplay, two-ish for the most challenging, I would say. Day-to-day uh, -day tasks, I would say, I've been sitting at about around eight hours, six to eight hours. Um, I don't often let it get down to dying anyways, because I don't have anything that I would use it for that much straight through. Speakers here, uh, they sounded pretty good. They're down facing, very similar design as the G15, G14, um, and some other laptops that I've had, which is great. Uh, ports wise, we have the uh, USB type A over here, right here. USB-C, which is power and display. So you can do both at the same time, which I've tested. Uh, over here, we have the HDMI out. We have the uh, headphones. We have another USB-C, and this is again, power delivery and display at the same time. And then we have that XGM uh, Asus external GPU thing that you can get if you get this model with a 3070 or 3080, I think you can get right now. So that's all fine. RAM is soldered. Um, so, you know, you can't upgrade this at all. This is 16 gigabytes. I've seen that there's a 32 gigabyte model of this. Uh, I think it was in Europe. I haven't seen it in, in the Canadian website, so you may not be able to get it in Canada uh, or the US, at least right now. But if you want it and, uh, you know, 32 is something that you're going to be needing in the future because this is a pretty powerful laptop. If you get 32, it should last you for quite a while, um, depending on your tasks. Um, but for me, I just, first of all, it wasn't available and I don't need it. I have a desktop for the most intensive stuff. Uh, the, the SSD actually has a thermal pad on it, which is nice. Um, however, the bottom here is plastic. So, I mean, it will pull away some heat, but where's it going to go into the plastic? Um, if this bottom chassis piece was metal, like aluminum or something, um, uh, or like a magnesium, it would definitely move more heat away from these VRMs and the SSD and all that, which is nice. Um, so those would be overall cooler. However, the bottom of the laptop, when it's sitting on your lap would be, would feel warmer. Um, to the touch. So clearly maybe it just doesn't need it. Maybe the cooling and the power requirements are adequate enough, you know, that it's just not needed in this system. So you don't need to bring the heat off of that. So they went for some comfort there. And maybe these chips just aren't getting that toasty. Uh, here's the two fans. You have the CPU and GPU. Clearly the CPU is going to be the larger. The 5900 HS is going to require more beefy cooling here. Uh, I'm not going to take this off because this is, uh, liquid metal cooling, and I don't want to reapply that, and I don't have any on me, and it's probably done at a pretty good level, so I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, but the CPU will require more heating, uh, more heat dispersion, so it's gonna have the larger fan here. The GPU is not quite as hot, so it's over here. Um, you saw in the videos that uh, when you're just doing, for example, just a CPU test or just a GPU test, the other chip doesn't get hot and it's shared. So it's easier for, for example, the CPU to stay cool if you're not using the GPU. So if you're just doing some type of synthetic um, benchmarking with just the CPU. If you play games where you're taxing everything, the whole cooling system here is being taxed. So it doesn't stay as cool because, you know, it's these two pipes here 
and these two fans are trying to cool both the GPU and the CPU at the same time. So that's something to be considered of. In gaming, it's gonna get slightly warmer than, you know, just even just blasting the CPU on its own because, you know, it shares the heating over here, the cooling over here. Uh, one other thing of note, the exhausts are in the back here. So you have two exhausts here and one exhaust here on the right. So when I was first using this laptop, I was gaming and I had a mouse over here uh, and my finger was right near this exhaust here and it was getting pretty toasty. It, heat doesn't come out really fast out of here anyways, but it was getting toasty to the point of being annoying. Um, so you will potentially want to offset your hand slightly down here because the vent will blast directly into your hand there, which is kind of annoying. Um, once I had the cooling pad, however, it didn't do that anymore. I guess it was pulling out enough air, pulling it down or something because the cooling pad is oversized anyways. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's basically the inside there. Um, I'm not going to take it a lot apart because there's not a lot to really see, to be honest. There's not a lot under the, the battery here um, and everything's kind of soldered. So, um, And I don't want to take these off because they are liquid metal. So there you go. You're pretty much good to go right out of the gate. You don't need to resolder them or anything. Wi-Fi chips over here. Um, looks like it's Intel AX200D2WL. I think that says it's exceptionally small writing. Uh, and I've noticed the Wi-Fi is fine. My home Wi-Fi is only 150 megabytes per second, and it seems to reach that totally fine. So oh, the bottom goes on nice and easily. There's no clips that are hook style clips that I saw, so it looks like you can just pop it in. You don't have to basically uh, get that in kind of like a cradle. And there you go. Good to go. Put the screws back in and I'm ready to rumble. Okay, so I've been using the laptop for a week now, a little over a week now, um, and I just wanted to go over some of the thoughts that I have on it, um, and I'll do some gaming stuff as well, but um, one interesting thing is I actually ended up just leaving that side piece off there. Um, you can charge the laptop from this side here or the other USB-C. Um, so I actually often just plug it on this side here. The reason is, is that my outlet is actually on that side, so I'll typically use that more often. Um, and then this one I use for USB dongles or that, or, you know, you certainly can charge from this side, but I typically use the other one. So again, either is fine. I have an external Lenovo a portable monitor, which uses USB-C and you can actually charge through it. Uh, I have another video on that and that works fine. It actually will deliver power and video from either USB-C. So that's really nice. So it does display and, uh, power delivery, which is really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> Other things of note in terms of just like general usability, I'm kind of a stickler for fingerprints and you can probably see in the video, it's, this thing is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Like I don't have greasy hands. I actually wash my hands quite a bit. Um, and then, I don't know, they're not slimy, but the keyboard is always kind of, has like fingerprints on it. It's kind of gross. So if fingerprints are, uh, you know, something that's gonna bother you, this will actually drive you nuts. Um, it's just that the black, plastic and the kind of the finish of it are just brutal. I actually cleaned this right before I started recording right now. Um, it's just really gross. And you know, I don't eat Cheetos and then touch my keyboard. It's just, that's just the way that it is. So fingerprints really bad on the keyboard. On the screen, the fingerprints actually aren't bad. Um, so I've been using this as touch a fair bit. Like I don't use it a lot, but enough. And the uh, fingerprints don't really bother me on here. You know, you can't really see them. Um, the temperatures are really nice actually when you're not doing anything super intensive. Right here, it's at 44 degrees C. When I, If I loaded up some YouTube and had a bunch of stuff going, it would still be under 50. It might be, you know, 48, 49, 50. Um, this isn't even the best pad. Like it's, you know, it's on a flat surface, but it doesn't have great airflow under it. And it's, it's fine. It just, you know, this doesn't need it. The fans, um, you know, just, they're just not pumped up here. So it just doesn't produce a lot of heat in general. These AMD processors, even the high-end ones like the 5900, when they're just doing menial tasks, they just aren't taxed. And so the, the efficiency is really, really good. In terms of battery, um, if you game on the battery, it does keep the settings lower. So you'll notice, you know, I noticed you'll probably will, if you look at the earlier part of, if you look at the earlier part of the video, when I plug in the power, um, it actually does increase the settings like automatically. So it's built into the um, armory crate I suppose so the screen flashes it increases the refresh rate and it goes into like even a higher performance mode um, so then you can come over here and you know, go back to performance mode and 
when gaming with the, the laptop unplugged, it performs fine. I don't see any issues with it. Um, but when you plug it in, it definitely does perform better. Um, so it just it's just able to achieve more power um, delivery to those components. So it's really, really good. In terms of noise, when it's maxed out, um, you know, you're playing a game that's very taxing. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's loud. It's as loud as any, I guess, ultra book when you're running it um, with like intense processes. It's still quieter than your standard uh, dedicated gaming laptop because those typically have really big fans and they're larger machines. So they actually produce more sound. They don't may not get as hot overall and they may fans and they may not need to go as quickly to move that heat, but um, you know, they just have larger fans. So they're just noisier. Okay, and there we go. So we're at 68 or 70 FPS if we unlock max frame rates at 100% GPU utilization at uh, 4 to 4 on ultra presets uh, above 60 no problem whatsoever consistently closer to I'd say 75 or 80 so the temperature is over here you know 80 ish 72 this isn't the most CPU intensive game um, and the probably more GPU intensive obviously so we're you know around 70 with fully maxed GPU when we're playing the game fan noise it says here we're up to 39.8 dBA um, in terms of actually hearing it, it's not pitchy at all. It's not super high pitched. It's not whiny. It's kind of like a really quiet background fan. Um, I've heard that, you know, if you put the device actually up on something, it's going to get better airflow and that makes sense. In terms of feeling it, um, you know, the, def the deck is warm, but it's not bothering me. And so full screen, obviously, uh, DirectX 12, will leave that default. Uh, Nvidia DS DLSS, well, I guess it's on max. So we'll leave that and quality is max. We can play with that in a minute. Motion blur turned off because it makes me want to vomit. Um, field of view, uh, we can turn that up just for all y'all motion sick people. Um, I'm the same way. I don't know if it'll help anyways, but limit FPS. Let's just, let's just turn off limit FPS actually. Um, I guess display will set it to whatever my display is. Quality, we're going to set to epic to start with. Um, and we'll leave DLSS on. And we'll just see how that looks. Okay, so now we're on epic settings. Uh, we'll leave DLSS on max and see how that looks. I turned, I changed the field of view and some other things. Um, but yeah, this looks fantastic. I turned off motion blur and that because it, it really does make me sick. Turn back the field view a little bit too. This game, again, is not super taxing, um, even though it's relatively new, it's just not, it's not designed to be a super taxing game. Uh, and this is running beautifully. Uh, this looks great. This is above 30 FPS. It'd be nice if there's a counter, but I can tell right away. Let's, let's just keep tweaking things, see if we can set it higher. Um, let's turn DLSS off, not that we would, not that I would do that, because um, why would you? It doesn't really need it. We'll just turn it off. Leave graphics on maximum and see what kind of a difference that makes. Um, I'm assuming it's going to, yeah, it did drop a bit in frame rate. Or, uh, it's still extremely playable here, so I am I can say without a, without a doubt that it's above 30 FPS. Um, I don't know how much higher than that it is, but it's fine. So this is no DLSS, but I mean, you might as well turn it on since we have access to it in this case. So, you know, Turn it on. You can set it to whatever you want, as high as max as you want or whatever. So it looks like here you have access to AMD Fidelity FX, so that's actually really cool. So this game has Fidelity FX and DLSS, so good on the developers. So this is the AMD Fidelity FX, which is a really, really nice option. Um, I have a really high-end GPU in my desktop, so I don't use it, but if I had my RX 580 still, it would have been really nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, looks great. It actually looks to perform almost the same as... DLSS, uh, which is cool. 
it's similar in some ways. You know, if you watch videos on it, what it actually does, you can turn this up and down. Um, let's just quality. Let's put it to performance and just see. Okay, that. So that when you go to performance, it does look. It's hard for you to tell, maybe, but a little bit muddier. Um, running beautifully though. But to be honest, I don't think we need to do that here because um, it doesn't seem to be struggling. So personally, on this machine, I would just leave it at quality and get the best graphics, and it looks great. There we are, more or less max settings, just an ultra preset. DLSS on, however, to the max, but set to, to performance, and it works great. Really, really nice. Uh, we'll check the settings here. We're at 120 hertz refresh rate. Again, it's a 120 hertz screen, which is really nice. Uh, field, I'm not going to tweak any of this field of view stuff, even though I usually do because it makes me nauseous. Uh, we'll go into settings here. So frame rate limiter will be about 200, so basically it just won't have a limit, more or less, with this card. Uh, you can go through here. We can change this to D DX12. We'll leave it as off for now, and I'll maybe play with that after. Graphics quality, we'll leave it at high, and we'll just see how it performs here. Um, DLSS. Okay, so we'll set it at uh, high settings, high presets, um, so it'll just be kind of whatever that comes with. Have a look at the game. So it looks like we're at, right here off the bat, we're at 30% uh, CPU usage and 84% GPU. And again, we're limited by the VRAM, so you know, the GPU is not being fully taxed in terms of raw performance. It's the VRAM again, but uh, it performs really, really quite well. Uh, we're getting over 30 frames, obviously. Uh, I don't have the numbers up because that's not what this is about, but. It's more about the experience, and it's great. Performing totally fine. Temperatures are a little bit warm, 80 and 80, more or less. So again, very reasonable. You can play like this for hours. Uh, we will turn the video settings up, and uh, this is where we start to get, I've did this a little bit before, and it will start to tax the system a bit too much. And I believe it's just probably the VRAM is just Okay, so here we go. Now we're at, uh, again, we're at ultra presets here. Just go look at it one more time. Everything's ultra. I will leave all this other stuff default. I uh, don't know what I did there. So this is ultra here. So not that much CPU usage. GPU is being used quite a bit. Uh, VRAM is actually less, less taxed here for some reason. Uh, but the, the experience is great. You know, it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, there's no hitching. We're getting a respectable frame rate. Uh, it's pretty obvious it's going over 30. And it looks great. So we'll quickly, uh, again, you know, we're not, we're not temperature throttling here. So this isn't going to increase performance because it's just not that hot. If we were sitting it on a blanket or something, you know, we would be throttling. So let's play for a moment again with max settings here, with ultra settings, and we'll see. Uh... You know, everything looks great. This is ultra presets, and the game's running buttery smooth. You know, we're not getting 120 frames, obviously, but. Go back to the temperature here and lower again, so 75 and 70. So with a, just a generic $20 cooling mat, uh, it looks like we're getting really good temperatures here. So uh, much more respectable, you know, 80 on the CPU and 65 on the GPU. This CPU is very powerful CPU for what it is, so it's going to be warm. Um, the GPU is more in line with, you know, an Ultrabook. It's still pretty impressive that it's in here, but it's more in line with an Ultrabook. So, you know, having these type temperatures on a GPU is uh, good. Okay, so this is another bit of software that some people use, Prime95, and some people don't, but I'm just going to run it because I just want to blast the CPU. The reason is this CPU is quite overpowered for the system, so I want it to get quite hot. And I'm actually going to close out the, that test there. And I want it to really tax the GPU, the CPU to absolute max, and just see what kind of temperatures we're getting. So now we have the 
CPU up here up at about 100, well, at 100 now. You can see the temperatures. Okay, so we're at 80 degrees or so. Fans aren't going that loud. So this is basically going to mimic a uh, just a CPU intensive task. I'm going to throw on the fan there and just see if it brings down the temperature at all. I don't know, it's sitting at about 80 degrees regardless. So it looks like the system cooling is able to keep it around 80 with just the CPU being taxed. Um, let's try to also blast the GPU a little bit. Um, there's other software again you can use for this, but uh, let's just do this here. So we're going to tax the GPU. Okay, so now we're really pumping here. So we got CPU 100%, GPU 100%. So this system is at max right now. Um, if it gets hot, it'll obviously throttle itself, but it looks like we're at 80 degrees, 73. This will, there'll be a little bit of lag in this upgrading, updating. So what's my takeaway on this laptop? Uh, I'm gonna say right now that I, this is probably the best laptop I've ever used for my purpose. I need something that's highly portable, you know, weighs under three pounds is exceptionally thin, just a tiny little thing. I need to be able to move it around, but I do need performance. The CPU performance is actually very important for what I do. I do spreadsheet work, I work with GIS rasters, and it helps quite a bit, and some like programming. Um, so it's really, really good to have that. Obviously I do some video editing, which is important to have a good CPU as well, but I also do want the GPU. The type of work that I do with GIS does uh, benefit from 3D acceleration quite a bit. So it's really, really nice if you're an engineer, architect, or something like that, or using GIS, it's quite useful. So now I'm just going to give you my takeaway from this laptop. In terms of portability, it's superb. You know, under three pounds, very, very thin. Uh, only weighs around two and a half pounds or 2.6 pounds or so. Uh, so it's super, super portable. I can just hold it in one hand, pop it in my backpack, no problems. Very, very portable. But the most important thing for me is its versatility and the fact that it has so much power to offer. So a 5900HS uh, CPU is nothing to laugh at. It's quite powerful, especially in this tiny little form factor. It allows me to do things that I do, such as video rendering, uh, I do GIS work, I do programming and uh, spreadsheets, and it just breezes through those. It's, it's quite, quite nice. Um, also, because it's such a powerful chip, it's not taxed when you're doing just kind of mundane stuff or even you know, moderate tasks. It's not going to be blasting the CPU to do that, which is really, really nice. So you don't have lots of headroom and overhead for doing other things at the same time. You can actually run processes while doing other processes in the background, which is quite nice. Um, and before, I thought I was going to be okay with just Ryzen integrated graphics um, with the Vega graphics from my ThinkBook, which is true for most things um, because they are quite good. And this you can just run on Vega graphics. You can just disable the NVIDIA GPU, the, and then you don't have the dedicated graphics drawing power, and you're just running off the AMD, which is really nice. It's quite powerful, and it gets you through for even light gaming, to be honest. But day-to-day -day tasks, it's great. But having that dedicated 3050 Ti is really good for me. Uh, I do uh, use, I do benefit from the 3D rendering when I do my GIS work, so that's really, really nice. But also, I game. And I don't have a lot of time to game anymore, actually very little time to game, so it's nice to have something like this that's super portable. I can take with me to work, and when I have 10 to 15 minutes downtime, I can just, boom, switch into games and start playing. I don't have to set anything up, it's just, it's ready to go. So it's really, really nice. In terms of uh, you know, form factor and usability, the keyboard is quite nice. It's got a lot of actual travel on the keys. Really, really nice. Um, it feels nice to type on, so that's really great. Audio is acceptable. Screen is actually really nice. 120 hertz refresh rate is really nice, especially when it's on power, but it's good overall. The convertible factor is, I didn't think I was going to use it that much. You know, Being able to use this and be in tablet mode and that kind of thing, you know, where it goes vertical. Um, it's, it was fine. You know, I was going to use the touch screen from time to time when I was doing things and just go like that while it was in laptop mode. But what I actually did, you know, by getting a Microsoft Surface Pen, um, 
it, it is actually quite nice to be able to come in here and, you know, write notes as I'm going along. Um, so, you know, I can scribble, 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 and, you know, it's fine. Apparently make an M there. Um, for what I do, it's also nice to just have, you know, if I have, for example, OneDrive open, or in my case, I actually use Microsoft Paint quite a bit because I'm old school, but sometimes I just want a very simple sketch, you know, in something that um, I'm just going to draw really, really quick, and I need the precision of that. I don't want to be using my finger, which you can. You can certainly use your finger on a touch screen like this, uh, but I wanted to be able to use, you know, Microsoft Pen and draw, you know, whatever I needed to do really quick, and, you know, that's what this is supposed to look like. It's really nice to have that. The Microsoft Surface Pen worked perfect. I just bought it, and... I didn't do anything. I just put it to the screen and it actually recognizes it. Um, you know, it recognizes pressure, as you can see. And, you know, the erase thing works. So the Microsoft Surface Pen or whatever alternative that's going to work works great for this. So all in all, this is a killer laptop. It's got the portability. It's got the battery life. It's got the form factor. Uh, it's got the build quality, but it also has the performance uh, from that CPU and GPU being quite powerful for what it is. And being a two-in-one, you know, convertible, um, you know, if you're just watching movies, you can throw it in that. If you're just drawing, uh, it works quite well. Um, the screen is very responsive. Uh, quite impressed, actually. So overall, I would highly recommend it. It is pretty expensive, $2,000 Canadian, full price for this model with the 3050 Ti. Uh, if you can get it cheaper, I mean, that's great. I got a sale on it. But um, even so, if you need something that does all this, there is no other laptop that I've seen, at least in the North American markets, that can do all of this, that has every single aspect of what you would want in a laptop kind of put into it and your only compromises are you know you're not getting the best gpu or uh you know the best large screen but you're getting very good for everything there's no compromises where you're going to say well that's bad everything is great in this laptop um, and the only way you could get a better gpu would be to get a bigger laptop and then sacrifice portability and power and battery life so um yeah so overall great laptop